was really good. I like to hear it. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, uh, Dean Levin. It's uh, actually wonderful to be here to see two deans, uh, Dean Fuchs, welcome, uh, to see my good friend and former Minister of Health, uh, Philip Couillard. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is indeed um, an honor for me. And uh, I'm often asked to talk about the drivers of healthcare over the next 10 to 20 years, primarily as we are beginning to embark on what the Dean described, one of the biggest healthcare redesign projects in Canada with the construction of the new McGill University Health Center. And just to give a moment on that before I get into my talk, on October the 15th last year, the project was approved in its entirety. In April, you're going to start to see the first works around the site. There is already a fairly large crane sitting up at the Montreal Devereux Hospital for some of its work. And that over the next, uh, by the end of this year, by uh, December, we should actually have construction going on within the site of the new hospital. So I think that we're coming to a point where we had to move on from saying, would we have the bricks and mortar? But more importantly, what goes on inside? What are the things that really matter? Because whilst the bricks and mortar are wonderful packaging, it is what goes on inside that somehow is more important. And in my mind, there are three principal drivers that we're gonna see working within the next 10, 15 years. And they're very simply, an informed consumer. They're secondly, the advent and usage of e-health in all its forms. And finally, the advent of genomics. And today I plan to focus on the latter two, and not just describe the wonderful advances that we have seen from a scientific point of view, but also to try to address some of the more contentious or not necessarily well thought out issues that we will deal with. From whence have we come and where are we today? What are the opportunities, the challenges, the risks? How does the law fit in the picture and how do we compare with other jurisdictions? And what avenues should Quebec and Canada take in harnessing these wonderful new technologies as we move into the next 10, 20 years? We could spend hours on defining moments in the history of medicine and science, but my purpose in addressing this question is to simply provide some perspective for today's discussion. Let's start right at the beginning. Let's start uh, with the father of medicine, Hippocrates. In a way, some have said that Hippocrates, for better or worse, observed sick people and not diseases. Human dissection only began after Aristotle had begun dissecting flora and fauna. Greater awareness about structure and function followed as did the understanding of the relationship between pathology and disease. A further defining time was heralded in by Canadian-born Sir William Usler, a McGill graduate. He was the illustrious author of The Principles and Practice of Medicine in 1892. Usler had a tremendous knowledge of the pathology of disease. He brought medicine to the bedside, applying research breakthroughs and new knowledge to his cases and to the teaching of students. Let's leap ahead now, almost 100 years later. In 1990, the Human Genome Project was launched formally. It took three billion in public funds and hundreds of the researchers from the United States, and Canada, and the UK, and other countries to sequence the human genome. The project's goals were formidable identify the approximately 20,000 to 25,000 genes in human DNA. Determine the sequences of the three billion chemical base pairs that make up human DNA. Store this information in databases, improve tools for data analysis, transfer related technologies to the private sector, and address the ethical, the legal, and the societal issues that could arise from the project. In 2003, the Human Genome Project was considered complete. 
though subsequent identification, mapping, sequencing, and analysis continue to this day. Parallel, paralleling this amazing project of unraveling the human genome were significant advances in instrumentation, automation, computation, which not only accelerated, but actually transformed, transformed the process. Bear in mind that computer technology was making its own leaps and bounds, and not so, not so long ago. As computers are so ubiquitous today in our lives that it's hard to believe that the basic first computer was 1930s, the first workstation in the 1970s, and multimedia only in the 1990s. As for the internet, it's easy to forget that it was rolled out in universities in 1983, and the World Wide Web became a reality in, 80, in 1989. More recently, we have been ta started to tackle the concept of electronic health records. Some would call this the holy grail of digitizing patient records and making them instantly accessible to healthcare professionals nationwide and even internationally. Every Canadian province and territory has agreed to take on some aspect of that project, the electronic medical record. Quebec, for its part, started rolling out in May 2008 a project, pilot project in the Quebec City <coughs> area to confirm whether the electronic health record system can be integrated harmoniously into various healthcare settings, where the clinical information can be exchanged easily between participating healthcare professionals and sites, and whether the various components of the system operate smoothly together. This will allow us to make adjustments as needed and then to roll it out across the province beginning in 2011. And 2015 is the target date for the new system that can be totally implemented nationwide. That is only six years from now. And we know that a lot can happen in that time. What is important to retain is that we have come from a place of relative ignorance, limitations, and beliefs based on experience made some colossal leaps in a short time span, only to reach a place where a wealth of information can be disseminated and accessed with incredible speed, with or without consent, and with the predictive capacity to raise myriad legal, ethical, and social issues. So what are the opportunities, the challenges, and the risks? From a purely medical perspective, let's face it, genomics is helping us to gain a fundamental understanding of the biology of many diseases, thus changing patient care from treating symptoms to treating causation. <coughs> Genetic tests have the potential to enrich preventative medicine and make the promise of personalized medicine a reality. That being said, after an expenditure of billions of dollars, there's still more uncertainties they are certainties. Moreover, the general population needs to understand that we've got a long way to go, despite the fact that marketing savvy companies, particularly United States based companies, are already trying to capitalize on discoveries in direct consumer marketing of personal genomes. I'd like to give you just a couple of examples. There are now three big companies, which we call in the United States the Big Three in affordable personal genomics, which offer a personal analysis of rare as well as common genetic variants, and are seemingly well established in the market. They are Navigenics, 23andMe, and DecodeMe. They are slick websites, advertised services ranging from $400 to $2,500. Nomenclature includes such statements as empower prevention, decode genetics, an unrivaled track record in drug discovery, find out what's going to happen to you. And I've actually had some patients actually come with a packet from one of these companies that says, this is the chance I have of developing breast cancer, this is the chance my daughter has of developing it, now what do I do? 